Welcome to the Midnight Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Ethan Bennett, alongside my fellow co-host, Tyler Sinden. We are both entrepreneurs who are learning, growing, and building our businesses, and our goal is to share our experiences and knowledge to help you grow and become a successful entrepreneur. Strap in. Tyler, what's going on? Not much. We're just chilling here, still in Tampa. Tampa Tyler is having a good time, and we're, you know, we're just chilling. What about you? Not too much. Easton, Minot Easton is pretty cold. Uh, it's pretty chilly up here in the in the north side of the country, but that's all right. We had a little flirt. There's a little, you know, teaser of some spring and now it is gone and it's back to snowing. So, well, hopefully by the time I get there, it'll be nice and warm, but I highly doubt it. Yeah. Bring the Depends warm weather. How long it takes me to get there. Tampa. <laughs> like, I'll see what I can do. You might get to the Midwest and start having to do those uh, sled dogs. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll take my uh, Huskies up there. There you go. Uh, what's new with you, Tyler? You got uh, got anything riveting you'd like to share with the audience? So I feel like we always share something that's really positive and all that shit. And I feel like that's not really what business is. And we don't often share enough of the times what's challenging us. And I feel like we have a really good example of this currently going on right now with our business because what happened was we ended up running out of one of our products, one of the styles, and it was one of our most popular products. And we had two variations of it, two different colors. And the interesting thing is, I believe majority of what our sales and traffic was coming from was coming from organic. And once we ran out of that product, just it was just one of the variations. So we still have one still in stock. And once we ran out, it seemed like Google stops pushing us and we aren't getting any sales from it. So it's not even just that. It's everything we're not getting sales from. So it's really interesting that I feel like just Google. Google's like, oh, you don't have anything in stock. It shows that you guys aren't in service or maybe it just shows that you guys are shit. And Google's like, I'm not going to push you guys anymore because you don't want to get anything back in stock. So what I ended up doing was deleting that variation to see if it would change and it's been about a week or two and nothing's changed yet so it's really interesting that that's happened to us so that's one one thing that i i'd like to share because we've always been saying how great life's been and honestly life's not great (laughs) tyler's on the verge of being no more he's just like i'm just about done with life easton it's almost it's almost to that point (laughs) google's fucking me hand and fist yeah uh, that's all right though. Yeah. Um, you know, you just got to battle through we'll these survive. times, but yeah, I don't know. That is, a, that is a little bit goofy that Google would stop pushing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like it's our whole website, but we do have a couple blogs that are actually doing really well. And what we decided, what we're trying to do right now is set up some affiliate programs because a few of the blogs that we are getting good traffic on is ones that we're linking out to other products and other websites selling their products. It's like, what's the best travel watch case? And what are some different types of wallets? And those two blogs are starting to get a lot of traffic for us. So what we decided to do, I I applied for a couple one. We already got rejected by one, but I applied to a couple different affiliate programs to see if we could partner up with them so we could potentially get sales because we're getting a lot of traffic. So it'd be cool just another revenue stream for us to get in. And then that's basically straight profit because that's going straight to them. And then we would just be getting that profit. So that's another thing that's going on with me. How, uh, how are you promoting the blogs? Where are you seeing most of the traffic come from? It's all organic. We just, we're just extremely smart Easton. <laughs> now this is kind of our wheelhouse with marketing. Cause I know, I know they always say, you want two partners that are different skill sets. And unfortunately, I think Riley and I are both very similar skill sets with marketing. And that's what we ended up doing is I think a good reason why we are doing so good with these blogs is because we both have marketing skills and we're just ranking organically on Google. So that's pretty much where all of our traffic's coming from. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I thought you were going to throw me the answer. That's like, Hey, you got to pay for that information. But it's good that you could nope. sh- it's good that you could share a little bit of it with me and the audience. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't happen overnight. Like you, Google takes time to 
marinate and learn your blogs, learn your website, learn whatever it is. So you're not just going to publish a blog and you're going to get views overnight. And that's what happened with us. With these blogs, it's taken some time. Like the one blog was one of our first blogs and it's been live for quite a few months and now it's just starting to get traffic. And the other one's been live for at least one or two, one or two months. And now it's over the last few weeks, it's been starting to pick up traffic and picking up an impression. So it blogging's a really slow growth. Consistency, that's what it boils down to, right? I would agree. And consistent, consistent quality. Consistent posts, consistent quality, consistent everything. If you just stay consistent, man, I you're going to be... tweet that. There you go. <laughs> tweet. I'm doing a podcast right now and I just <laughs> thought about something. A friend, my co-host... One of the smartest men I know, you could throw me a plug, tag me maybe in parentheses, <laughs> said this, yeah. <laughs> and there you go. Yeah, um, I got you. But no, that's right. that's good to hear uh, on my end. Another cold outreach. So I think, I don't know, it feels like lately things have been picking up with people just reaching out for projects. I don't know if that's a coincidence that these are all just happening to line up at the same time, or if some of the marketing efforts, whether it's social media or posting, anything in that nature is helping. I want to say that it's a little bit of a coincidence because a lot of them are reoccurring clients, but also there have been a few new clients that I just haven't ever worked with and they're reaching out and we talked about one of them that we can't disclose anything because of an NDA, but they found me on Instagram, which is kind of cool to see. So I don't know if they were just searching North Dakota video production companies or how they found me on Instagram, but it is cool to see that Instagram is working for one of the, uh, not outreach methods, but what would you say? One of the marketing marketing paths that the clients Platforms. are going down. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool that you're seeing people come through Instagram because I feel like a lot of the times you don't typically see that. And I, I don't know how much you can say about this, but it's interesting seeing not just people from Minot coming to you and now you're starting to branch out and it seems like your business is starting to expand a little bit. And we talked about it on the last episode where it's like that compound effect where the hockey stick growth is starting to take off. People are starting to realize your work. They're seeing it. They're like, oh, this guy's actually pretty good. And then I don't know what you'll do. Maybe you'll start being, well, I, I jokingly said this to you before and and I, I don't know if you'll do this, but maybe you'll be the uh, traveling videographer. It's funny because I'm like talking to the camera, but I got you down here and I yeah. <laughs> just realized that. <laughs> Sorry. No, no. You can it's could. good for the, uh, I'm, I'm looking at that chin of yours. It's nice. <laughs> Clean cut. Um, but yeah, no. Do you is, think you'll do the, the traveling videography or what do you think? Yeah, I mean, if there's, if there's opportunities that arise, it's like, hey, we want you to come to this city and shoot then for sure. Two of the people that reached out, one of the shoots is actually two and a half hours away and the other one is all over the state. So that's kind of cool that they're not Minot local productions that we're working on and that it actually is some traveling stuff. So getting the word out there, uh, I think it's I think it's going well so far. Are you ever able to use that as a marketing tactic? Say like we've helped this client or would it be like, I don't want to say when, it, when the partnerships done but could you say you helped them or is there ever a time when you because i know you signed the nda but yeah i don't i'm not sure honestly because it is a national company and i'd like to be able to say like hey this person is in my portfolio we've worked with them before yeah it adds some credibility social proof yeah social proof and that's where maybe after the project when everything's all said and done and they've posted the work, I could potentially reach out and say, hey, is it cool if I throw your guys' logo on my website, whatever it might be. But in the mm -hmm. meeting I had, they were not strict about it, but they're like, hey, just because of all, you know, it's a corporate company, it's publicly traded, mm -hmm. we have to comply with these rules. So it makes sense, um, mm -hmm. which is totally fine. Um, but it is, it is cool to be, start to be recognized from these companies that are coming from different areas and it's not people just from North Dakota. This company specifically is out of, so it's cool to see that. And can then the other, <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of companies. <laughs> can you not? I don't know. You signed an NDA. <laughs> I didn't read it. <laughs> That's right. Just like the, uh, the old Apple agreements that we all got to sign our lives away. Yeah, I agree. 
<laughs> no, you got me. It's Apple. <laughs> it, it's Apple. Uh, no, it's actually not Apple, but I don't know. I'll bleep it out. Just uh, better to cover my behind. But yeah, it's cool to be, you know, there's another company from, uh, they have offices in Texas and North Dakota. So it's cool to be working with these clients and these companies that are outside of North Dakota. So that's pretty, pretty exciting. The only other thing I want to touch on, I finished week two of this coaching program I'm in. I've been in it for a month and I've just got through week two. So I'm a little bit behind the eight ball, but um, getting after it, pretty much all that was was market research and restructuring pretty much how you do your whole entire business. And week three goes into the actual sales process that they teach you on how to get more leads and provide more value for customers. So that's pretty exciting. Other than that, what have you plugging along? What have you learned up to this point from those first two chapters or whatever it's called? Um, learned that, gosh, I'd have to think about it now. Uh, the main thing would be the value that you're providing them. So really you're not even selling your services Mm -hmm. and you never really even have to talk about your services. There's so many things I've learned that I talk about that really don't matter. The client doesn't care about. So it's really client Mm -hmm. forward, you know, figure out what does the client Mm -hmm. want to hear? Put yourselves in their shoes. Mm -hmm. They just want their problem. How it's going to benefit them. Correct. So sell the solution. So pretty much walk them Mm -hmm. through what their problems are and then sell the solution. You don't have to sell, oh, we're going to create this cool video and we're going to shoot it on this camera, this, that, the other thing. No, (laughs) just tell them how your solution is going to fix their problem that they have. I like that. I think that's a good piece of advice. Yeah, I haven't. I'm, I'm, it is quite an expensive, we've talked about this before, quite an expensive program. So I'm hoping that over the next month or so, I start to recoup some of that because Mm -hmm. it would suck paying that much. And then, you know, you get, you obviously going to learn something from it, but if you can't make your money back, then it is a little bit difficult. I feel like you will. They they even have the guarantee on it. So yeah, you're going to, I feel like you're, there's a very good chance that it's going to happen and you're going to make your money back or you're going to at least, I I think you'll do perfectly fine. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that's where the week three comes in. They start teaching you sales scripts and different strategies to get new Mm -hmm. clients. So we'll hopefully have that uh, to be able to talk about next week or the week after that to discuss. So Nice. Nice. We've been networking a lot here and (laughs) man, Eddie just puts in freaking words for me nonstop. I feel like I, 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 I don't think anyone that I work with listens to this and I'm so close to quitting. I feel like I'm <laughs> too stressed, Clip don't this. make enough and take up way too much time. I should. And then just post it everywhere Yeah, to, it, it takes up so much of my time. And Eddie's been set. Like I could literally move here and the amount that Eddie's already been selling me, I feel like I can move here. And in the first month I could probably make more than what I'm currently making, which is just absolutely insane. And don't know why I'm still working for someone else. And, Security, man, Jimbo. I'm, how would you even? <laughs> we're, how we're, would you? How would you move to the U.S.? I can't. That's a shitty thing. You need a company. I, like, I can. So I can. I can move here and live here, uh, just under like say five months and thirty days of the year. Um, so I could do that and then live in Canada the other six months, but I technically can't work or take money legally. Yeah, or start a business. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's stipulations around that. You got to be making certain amount or you got to have this amount. There's different regulations and shit like that. Or I could just join the military and, you know, come here. And How hard is it to get your U.S. Pew, pew. citizenship? Or I could marry someone. There's, yeah, one, there there's another way. Yeah. That so, can't help you yeah, get yourself a mail order I, bride. <laughs> there's got to be services out there. Oh, there is. I can hook you up, too. <laughs> I've tried them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's what's up with me. All right, Just, sick. Uh, well, let's get yeah. into this week's uh let's get into this week's topic. This one has been on our list for sick. a few weeks here now and we're going to be talking about ChatGPT and OpenAI, how to use it and how it can help you scale your business. So, Tyler, ChatGPT, pretty exciting new thing out there. Very exciting new thing and everyone's talking about it. That's why we're talking about it because everyone else is talking about it. We had a video that we briefly mentioned ChatGPT and it did very fairly well. So we're like, why not just do an episode on it and let's use it for our businesses, see how it does 
And I believe we both used it for, I don't think, I, I have used it for personal, but I haven't like put it to use. I did ask it some questions and I've more so used it for the business. And I know you have used it for both as well. So it, it's just absolutely changed in the game for everyone. So it's either going to, you're either going to use it and you're going to get ahead or you're not going to use it and you're probably going to fall behind. Yeah. And we have a lot of real world examples that we're going to go through as we walk through this episode, but I've been using it as much as possible. We both tried to use it as much as possible before we filmed this episode and the amount of things you can do it, do with it is actually incredible. Like I, I really don't even know where to begin. And obviously a disclaimer in the beginning of this episode, we're not masters at chat GPT. We just want to talk about our experiences, a couple of things that we've used and tried that have helped us. There's obviously probably more intricate videos out there that goes into the nitty gritty, but we're just talking to the layman sure. out there. We're talking to the layman. <laughs> just trying to get you started so you can potentially keep up with the other businesses and take over the other businesses that are lacking on this. So hopefully you can provide some insight on how you can use it. And yeah, I was going to say better provide service, but yeah, well, I mean, maybe it, it could, helps maybe for customer service. Yeah. And I think it really can be used for anything. I don't think there's really a limit to it. And we kind of touched on the importance of using it. You have to be using this cutting edge new technology and stay in the loop of what other people are doing. Otherwise, you're going to fall behind, like Tyler said. So a quick rundown of chat GPT, how it works. Basically, what it is, is a robot that you can ask any question and it's going to spit out an answer. That's pretty much the spark notes of it. Tyler, if you had to tell somebody in an elevator what chat GPT is in a little bit more detail, what would you say? It is, I'm assuming they know what Google is. So it's basically Google, but it gives you the answer. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good way of describing it. You don't have to search through it. It yeah. just gives it to you. Yeah, exactly. Like I was asking it some questions <laughs> I think I'll, I'll get into this later in the episode, but it, you just ask it a question and it's going to give you the answer and it's going to change everything. Even for high school, college students, you can just be working on a project and be like, hey, I need a marketing plan for a company that is wanting to start a supplement business and it's going to spit out a marketing plan for you, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Or even if you're writing a paper in school and you say, hey, I need a hook, a first sentence to start a paper about mm. living with a lawyer in That's New York good. City. It's going to give you something yeah. just like that. So really, the capabilities are endless. Whatever you can ask that thing, anything. I've asked it so many stupid things. I've asked it anything from jokes <laughs> to business plans to give me tweet ideas to write me a LinkedIn post. Everything you would want. It's pretty much like an employee that is free. Now, there is a paid version. I think it's what is it? 40 bucks a month or 43 bucks a month. Um, That's what but, I you know, heard. if you're using it a lot, it's, I'd say it's definitely worth it, but if you can get by with a free version, even better. One of the things I want to, you can definitely get you, by. Yeah. Free version. It's awesome. Sometimes they limit you on how much you can use it. Like they'll say their servers are too full, which in turn, if you get the paid version, they give you access to it 24 seven and you get the quickest available answers. One of the first things I want to pivot into is the creative ideas you might not have. So that's one thing I've used it for a ton is planning, whether it be client work or my own work. I've used it for scheduling 50 tweets. I had 50 video production tweets mm -hmm. and I pretty much took them and tweaked them a little bit. So it sounded like my own voice, but gave me 50 tweets in the bank to be able to tweet. So that's 50 pieces of content. It probably took me an hour to do. Another thing I've used it for is YouTube video outlines, which is crazy. If you want to write a YouTube video <laughs> on a script on how to the basics of filmmaking, whatever it might be, it'll give you five bullet points and the talking points you should be talking about. So really the creative ideas that opens up is, I don't, I, I keep saying the word endless, but really it's just, you know, there's no, there's no ceiling to it. I think the only ceiling is your mind because it, it, it gives back the answers to your questions. So you're only limited by the quality of questions that you ask it. So if you ask really good, intricate questions, which is strongly recommended because then it makes it as good and as niche as possible, that's basically the main limitation. So it's your, your own 
your own mind and questions that you ask it. Yeah, it really is. And that's something we're going to talk about later in the show is some additions to your searches to be a better user of chat GPT. But the more fine tuned you can make your answers, the better answers you or the more fine tuned you can make your questions, the better answers you're going to get. So that is something to keep in mind. One example that I use that I have on the notes here is I typed into chat GPT and I said, write a joke about a dog attacking a dove. Okay. And I think I said in, in the style of Kevin Hart, right? So you can, that would be one thing you'd add to a search is add a little bit more specificity. I can't say that word. I struggle with it so much. Specificity. Make it more specific. I think you got it, man. Uh, so write a joke about a dog attacking a dove in the voice of Kevin Hart. And this is what it said. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm not a comedian. But it said, I saw a dog attack a dove the other day. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing, dog? You can't even catch a ball. How are you going to catch a bird? But that dove was quick, man. He was like, I'm out of here. And the dog was like, man, I can't catch a break. You know, who could catch a bird, though? Michael Jordan? He could probably dunk on that dove. Get it out of the sky. But not this dog. He needs a, he needs to stick to catching frisbees. So obviously not the funniest joke ever. But you can kind of <laughs> see it had the it had the vernacular of Kevin Hart, and it it it, pick, it cherry picked some of the language from a Kevin Hart special they may be found on Google and wrote that into a joke about a dog attacking a dove. Now obviously you're going to get answers like that, so that's something to think about. They're not going to be perfect answers every time especially a joke. That one's probably a little bit more difficult, but we got some more examples down the road um, to talk about some things, some things that you can use it for. Imagine comedians just, they just stop going out now and they just use chat GPT and they just ask it, Hey, come up with some ideas for jokes. And then it comes up with ideas and it's like, Oh, I like where this could go. And then they start asking, give me a joke about this or give me a story about this because that's what they typically do with their jokes. It's a, it's a story. So they say, give me a story around this and then they see where it goes. And then they, it's just eliminating those experiences because I feel like that's where comedians get a lot of their jokes from is going out and experiencing stuff. And if you have, you haven't watched Seinfeld, but that's basically what Seinfeld's about where He's always out and about, and that's how he comes up with all of his jokes. Like, what's up with airlines and yeah. their free cookies? So it's th that type of stuff where you're not actually going out and experiencing it anymore. You're just asking Chat GPT, and then you're just going off that. So it'd be, man. It, Eventually, we're gonna be we're gonna be laying in our bed, not doing anything. We're gonna live our whole lives through the internet and be like, Nah, I went to the grocery store today. There was a, we're just going to be person. wearing giant goggles on our face and <laughs> we're just going to be walking around. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I have an example photo on here. Lit. Create a picture in the style of Van Gogh. I don't know if I did. I write that down or yeah. did you? <laughs> no, because you put example photo on all the shit. So I thought it was like example photo. And I thought you meant like the AIs where you could say create a picture in this style. So that's what I thought you were doing. I was like, why does he keep, why? Because it was just, it was the first example, this example photo and you clearly didn't put example photos anywhere, but yeah. <laughs> you got it like seven other times on here. So I thought, I thought you were just doing like example photo of like an AI. And I'm like, what you could also do is with these AI tools is say, create a photo of Easton Bennett in the style of Van Gogh. So yeah. it's just like using these different techniques, like you were saying, in the style of Kevin Hart, in the style of motivational. So you could do different types of techniques with chat GPT. Yeah, that's not intentionally where I was going with it. That's a good point to add, though. There are different AIs that can do more photo uh, capabilities like that. But the example photo, I was just going to throw it on the screen so people can kind of see what it looks like when you're asking the questions uh, and actually get somewhat of an idea. Tyler, some search examples. So let's go through a couple of these. These are some things that I've used and that maybe you've used if you want to chime in on a couple of things that you've searched on chat GPT, but I'll, I'll mm -hmm. have you touch on the first one. Okay. Because one thing that I did is I, I kind of ranted on this in the start of the episode, but I was like, 
what's one thing that I could do to create a, or I don't know if I said a million dollar business or what I said. I said, I have photography, videography, digital marketing skills, editing skills. What are some businesses that I could start to become a millionaire? And it basically listed out 10 different businesses that I could start. And then I went a little bit farther. I can't remember exactly what I asked from there, but I took what they, took what it gave me. And then I tried to ask it another question around that to go a little bit farther, go a little bit more in depth with it. So that was one thing that I did with it. I don't know if you did something similar with that. Yeah. I, in how I look at it, jumping off of what you said is one disclaimer that I do want to throw out to people listening to the show is that it's not going to do it's going to give you an answer, but it's not going to do the work that the answer provides. So it's not going to give you how to make a million dollars and then boom, next day you're a millionaire. It's just going to push you in the right direction of, hey, here's where you can focus your efforts. If I say, give me 10 YouTube ideas, boom, now I have 10 YouTube ideas and I can now execute on those ideas to grow my business. So it's not doing things for you, but it is jumpstarting you, kind of giving you that kick in the ass to go do whatever it is. Even if you don't know what it is, it's giving you ideas of what that might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it can definitely get the ball rolling. This is something that you said earlier and it made me think of something. You said, give me the start of a progress or a paper to write. And maybe you have like writer's block and you don't know what to do or don't know how to start it. You, you could ask ChatGPT, just say, hey, give me the starting sentence to this paper on the Adolf Hitler in whatever. So it, it's a good starting point. Yeah. And that's, that's what I like about it. it. It stops those times when you are stumped. Maybe you feel like you've hit a roadblock. You don't know what to do. That's where it almost puts you on to the right path. And that's what I enjoy about it. One example I wanted to talk about with ChatGPT that I've been using religiously since I found it is creating a podcast outline for whatever your podcast is about. So we actually used it on this podcast. So a lot of the points we're talking about, how meta, right? A lot of the points we're talking right. about on here, we threw into ChatGPT and said, create a podcast outline for an entrepreneur podcast where the topic is ChatGPT and OpenAI. And it gave us stuff to go through and we've tweaked it a little bit. So it, it flows with our show style, but that's how, that's how easy it is. Another example I've used it for is I host another comedy podcast where it's just one random topic every week. And you can create, if I say create a comedic podcast outline around dinosaurs, it will give me six, seven bullet points with detailed information on what to talk about. So it's really endless. If you wanted to create a podcast outline for a history podcast on the Gulf War, awesome. That's the example photo that I'm throwing on screen right now. Um, but, you know, that's it. The, again, the possibilities are endless with what you want to do for this. You should do this on your other podcast. I don't know if you've done an episode on it, but I feel like you should have chat GPT come, on, come up with a whole script for you guys on chat GPT and talk about it. I don't know. It's an idea. Like on the comedy podcast? Yeah. Well, it's difficult because it's different. You'd have to you'd have to tell Chat GPT to make it. Like the the scripts for our show are usually five pages. Where Chat GPT doesn't uh -huh. give you five pages worth of content. So you'd have to get the outline and then questions. just keep asking questions on each specific one. But it's definitely something that uh definitely something I'd be willing to try because a lot of times the research for a podcast Gets quite annoying. I will yeah. say that. Yeah, five pages sounds like a uh, a lot. Yeah, more than uh, I'll say it bluntly. More than I'd like to do. I'll say that. <laughs> Another yeah. example photo I'll throw on screen here is I asked it to write me an ebook for cooking in small spaces. Now, do I have a small space to cook in? No. Do I want to write an ebook about it? No but it's still going to give me that information. I'll throw that example photo on here and you can kind of see the information that chat GBT is giving us. So really, again, you can ask this thing, anything, whatever you can put your mind to, you can ask it. If you want to ask it, what color walls should I paint my house or what should I paint my walls in my house to match with gray furniture? It'll tell you. So really you can ask this thing, anything. I think it's really removing friends at the end of the day. 
I'm, I wouldn't say removing friends. It's just removing thinking. Yeah. I, it's not even removing thinking at the same time. It's removing work. It's time efficient. Yeah, it, me, it buys. You know, it helps like, you buy back so much project. time. Give me this. Oh, for sure. That's. I I thought about this the other day, like not the other day, but it was quite a few months ago, when I was just leaving the gym, and I was just thinking, the world we're trending in, and that the world that we've become, it's just a basic. Basically, everything's revolves around time. It's like how fast can you do this for me? How fast can you build the deck for me? Oh, how fast? And then you just got a couple competitors. It's like, I can do it in two days. This guy's like, I can do it in one day. This guy's like, I can do it same day. And then that's the same thing with like Amazon and then Canada Post, USPS, FedEx, U US, UPS, all these different places. It's just competing for speed. And I feel like that's basically everything it is. And that's what ChatGPT does. It helps time efficient, man, like speed everything up. And it eliminates the tedious tasks. I know one of my clients uses it for a job posting. So they post a lot of jobs on LinkedIn and they use it for like the summary, the overall, hey, write me an overview for a job summary on this, that, the other thing. And the salaries are this, that, and here are the requirements and boom, it spits it out. So that eliminated having to sit there and try to write some intricate job posting. And even if it isn't a job posting where it needs to be super intricate and sound professional, it always is going to give you that. And the nice part about it is you can tweak it. So if they give you an answer, you can say, make it funnier, make it simpler, mm -hmm. make it shorter, make it longer. And it's easier mm -hmm. to switch your answers based on what you're actually looking for. This is a perfect segue into the next point, which was I saw a job posting and it was remote and I was like, fuck it, why not? I'll apply for it. And I, it asked a question on a funnel that you ran for a business and I didn't really feel like doing it. I, I fucking hate filling out questions when you're filling out a resume and <laughs> an application and all that bullshit. So I went to chat GPT and I said, give me a funnel for a business that, or for a marketing campaign or whatever. And wrote a little intro about a f what a funnel is, what you can do with it, top of funnel, middle funnel, bottom funnel, and then it gave a little conclusion of everything. And I copy and pasted that, put it into the application. We'll wait and hear back. We haven't heard back yet. We'll see if we, <laughs> see if we get an interview, but yeah. <laughs> They're like, we've got seven of the same answer. What is going on? <laughs> Someone keeps applying under different aliases. <laughs> that would actually be pretty funny. Yeah, everyone's just using chat GPT to... I mean, that, that's what it is. Like, I'm a marketer, and yeah. if I'm not using ChatGPT, I'm falling behind. So, at the end yeah. of the day, you have to you have to look at it as a You have to look at it as a positive because often I hear people say, I don't like it because it's going to be taking over jobs, or I don't like it because of this. Well, how would you look at it for the positive? I look at it as it's buying back so much time for me. It's allowing me to do more. It's allowing me to execute more. It's allowing me to grow my business where, yeah, it might be removing jobs over here, but... If you look at it with the glass half full, that's generally when you can really start to take advantage of this or any other platform. Yeah, I, I hear some people saying we got to resist it because if we don't, it's just going to keep taking over. It's just going to keep getting bigger and shit like that. And at the same time, there's going to be a lot of people that aren't rejecting it and they're going to be using it and they're going to be using it to get ahead. So it's two-way street where are you going to use it, get ahead, not use it, fall behind and be ethical or whatever you want to, might not be ethical. I don't know your classifications here, but yeah, it's, it's a tough, tough you, argument. Yeah. You people listening can make your own decision on it. Me and Tyler are on board. If you don't want to be on board, that's totally fine. Tyler, let's talk about some things that you can do to help fine tune your searches. I know we've touched on them a little bit throughout the show, but how can you make your searches better than just saying, write me a joke? You can add in as much detail as possible. Be extremely detailed with your questions. You can say, I'm a digital marketer in X area, maybe Tampa, Tampa Florida, and I'm trying to target insurance brokers aged 25 to 35 just starting out trying to 
expedite their career in the insurance field, write me a sales copy email for this. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, that was off the top of my head, but it's basically trying to get as detailed and information in there as much as possible. Yeah. Don't be afraid of long winded questions because it's not like it's a long winded question that you might ask somebody when you're at a family gathering together where they might forget things. This thing's a robot. It can calculate everything. So if this question is 812 characters, it'll be fine. That the other thing you could also add is a target demographic. I know you mentioned it a little bit, but adding a target demographic helps a ton with it curating the answer to better fit your needs. So if I say create a sales strategy for me, it'll give me an answer. It'll be fine, but it'll be a little bit broad, a little bit generic. If I say give me a sales strategy for an insurance company that has 10 employees, it might be a little bit more niche. It's going to give you a little bit more targeted answer. So be as specific as you possibly can. When you were coming up with your tweets and your LinkedIn posts, did you add any specification specifications towards your target demographic or even, I think you used it for YouTube as well. Did you add any of that into it? Yeah. So I tried to keep it as broad as possible because I needed 50 different uh, 50 different posts. So I wanted it to be mm -hmm. able to pull from everywhere. If I made it too niche, it's hard to get 50 prompts on one specific thing. But I did say write 50 prompts or 50 tweets that revolve around the video production industry to better add value to potential clients. I think that was the exact search. So mm -hmm. I didn't use a specific client, just potential clients. So then it kind of curated the tweets more towards, okay, how would the value actually work if I was a client and I saw this tweet? The other thing mm -hmm. is with the super other niche reason I used it or a, an experience I've had is, I don't know if you've heard of the article 10 or not 10,000 fans, the article a thousand fans by Kevin Kelly. Nope. So basically what the article says is if you have a thousand true fans that pay you a hundred dollars a year, you make a hundred thousand dollars in the year. So if you can get someone, mm -hmm. if you can get a thousand people to pay you $8 and 33 cents a month, that's a hundred thousand dollars a year. And I really like the premise of the article. I actually saw a post of it on Instagram and I said, that's awesome. I put it on my story. I then went into chat GPT and I said, write me a LinkedIn post about the article, a thousand true fans by Kevin Kelly. And it spit it out. I copy and pasted it to my LinkedIn and post it. So it's that easy. That's how it took me 15 seconds to create a piece of content. I didn't have to sit and rack in my brain about, oh, how am I going to word this to my audience that this is a good article? I didn't have to try to be a good copywriter. I just let the computer do it for me. And honestly, if content creation is that easy, then like you really have no excuse not to be doing it. It's crazy how simple it seems when you break it down like that. It's like 1,000 people, $100. There's freaking 7 billion people of us. You don't yeah. think you can get 1,000 people? And I it's think crazy to think about it like that. The article breaks it down further to that's one person out of every like 26 million or one person out of every, Jeez. it's either 26 or 260 million, something crazy like that. If you can get one person out of every 26 million people to pay you $8.33 a month, and people might think or people often say, $100 a year, that's a lot. Well, okay, break it down further. $8 a month, that's half of a Netflix subscription. Can you provide mm -hmm. $8 worth of value per month to 1,000 people? Which, that's where we're getting to. <laughs> that's what we're going to go for. <laughs> Our Patreon is going to be $8.33 here at af after episode 50. I don't know. We're getting there. Slow, slow After and episode whatever 2024 is by the end of this year. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit over 50. Yeah, we'll we're be like two months in. 70 we're at like something. 25. Yeah. Well, we're not two months in because that's eight episodes. 60, 70. What do you mean? No, two months into the year. Oh, I thought you meant into our podcast journey. I'm like, no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, we're no, not, no, no, Tyler. No, no, no. <laughs> no, we're on episode 26 today. 26, baby. Divide that by four. 26, that's Quarter half a, a year. Decade. Six months, 26. <laughs> We're at a half a year. 
Yeah. Six months into this journey. It's crazy. All right. Um, yeah, let's talk about fun. some. Sorry, you got anything else to say? No. As I, far as that goes? You completely missed my joke, but we can move on. Sorry, I was speaking fast. What was the joke? Do you want to even want to say it again? I just said quarter of a decade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, was that episode. was that on the last episode? Yeah. I can't ever remember if yeah, it's off yeah. the podcast or on the podcast. Episode 25, quarter of a decade. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking, uh, or let's pivot into some real world business examples. Tyler, I'm going to throw this first one to you uh, because you're the one that sent me this guy on TikTok. Yeah, I just saw a video the other day about this guy, how he was using ChatGPT to create a, I believe it was a digital marketing company. And it was pretty staggering results that in 12 days, he was ma- able to make $9,000. I think it was profit. I don't know if it was or not. Do you remember? I can't remember. I think I want to say it was profit. Yeah. Either way, staggering results. 12 days, $9,000 using chat GPT. I mean, the results speak for itself. (laughs) And there's always those anomalies that, oh, that's just a flute case. You have to be a one percenter. Yeah, there might be a little bit of truth to that, but it just shows you the capabilities with the software. If someone can do it in 12 days, maybe you'll be able to figure Mm -hmm. out in a year. You don't have to go as quick mm-hmm. as this guy to make $9,000, but it shows you how powerful of a platform this actually is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's truly revolutionary. The other real world business business example, I already <laughs> mentioned it earlier. One of the clients I have uses it for job recruitment, posts on LinkedIn. He also uses it for social posting. So his company that he uses for marketing that does all their social posting and all their captions and copywriting. He pretty much told me he's going to just fire them because one, he doesn't really like the captions they're doing. And he said he can come up with the captions on <laughs> chat GPT in 10 seconds anyways. So that's interesting okay. that he mentioned that and maybe he's going to let go of that marketing company because of, because of this, but um, it's kind of cool to see. That's funny. On the topic of this, we had a client call today and he actually asked us about chat GPT and the influence it's going to have on marketing and in the world and shit like that. And I don't think he was saying it because he was going to get rid of us, but he was just asking in general because he just heard about it quite a few weeks ago. So he was just asking our thoughts on it. And I think the other person on the call, she thought that that may have been why he, he was asking, but it's funny you say that. Yeah, so we just had that happen. It's it's starting to take over the real world. I know I asked my parents a couple of weeks ago if they've heard of it, and they hadn't. So it hasn't gotten to the the public that wouldn't <laughs> every normies. yeah, the, but all the NARPs, the non athletic regular people. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean it'll get there eventually. Just like a new platform comes Definitely. out, there's always those early adapters, and then the the masses flood to it. Stay ahead of the curve. Maybe we should put that in the title. Stay ahead of the curve with. Uh, Chat GPT. It's not horrible, actually. It's not horrible. Disclaimers. A couple things we want to touch on. We're not even really going to go that in depth. I guess, Tyler, you might on the second one a little bit, but there is, there could be duplicate content. So keep an eye out for that. It's better to get the answer and then tweak it a little bit to make it your own. Almost like if you were plagiarizing a paper in high school, get the correct answer and then just tweak a couple things so it looks a little bit different. You know, get a question wrong here. Or there. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> look out for duplicate content. <laughs> Uh, you sound pretty experienced in this realm. Yeah, this is a bit. If I had the software in high school, man, <laughs> game changer. It would have been game over. It's funny. It's funny because I, you, what I was going to say is you can use AI to fix the AI's issue of cop duplicate content because you, there's another program that we use at work. It basically takes copy and then it rewrites it in a different form. So you could take the, go to chat GPT, be like, hey, write this. And then you're going to go to the other platform. <laughs> and you're going to use that to rewrite it. So it's not duplicate. They're just battle. We're putting them up against each other. We're like, come on, battle the AIs. <laughs> well, the one just takes your information that you already have done and then rewrites it, changes like the synonym, use synonyms and shit like that and rewords it and rewrites it, puts it here and here. So it just switches it up a little bit. But yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, and then you take that one that's unplagiarized, put it back into chat GPT and say, make it shorter, <laughs> and boom, you're there. There you go. You're there. All right, Tyler, you want to talk about the last Easy disclaimer, stuff. and we'll wrap this up. 
Yeah, so it does seem to have a little bit of bias because of the people that are obviously making it. I saw a post about the different people, organizations that ChatGPT has flagged and flagged as controversial. So it's just interesting seeing the the disparity. I don't know if that's the right word, but the contrast with it where it's saying this person's really bad. We got to watch out for him because he says a lot of controversial stuff and we got to silence him. And then there's this guy that doesn't say anything that doesn't say anything controversial. We don't got to silence him and we could say good stuff about him. So it's just really interesting to say that, see that. But at the same time, it's said also about the democratic party. If you're in America, it said, I don't know if they were just saying this as a cover up, but it said both Republicans and Democrats are both on the same side of they're both controversial. We both need to watch out for them. So it's just there might be a little bit of bias within the information. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Obviously, read through it. Don't just copy and paste and then send it. Uh, Make sure you're reading through your answers and just keep those things in the back of your mind. So in conclusion, uh, benefits, obviously, if, if. It's for you and you think it's morally correct. Some people are saying it's not. That's all right. You make your own decision. If you want to use it, start running with it. The the benefits are literally endless. You can use it for whatever, whether it be personal or business, and and just really start leveraging uh, the power of ChatGPT to stay ahead of other industries and your own industry too. Yeah, it just depends on, I think, your values and if you want to buy back time. I, I I think I heard that you could also ask it to write code for you. So you, the possibilities for it are just so endless. Like write a blog, write a captivating social media post, write a joke for me, write a YouTube script for me. The the possibilities are so endless. Yeah. So many benefits. And it might not take away the high-end jobs. It's not. If I say write a movie script, it's probably not going to make David Fincher lose his job as a movie writer and screenplay writer, but it'll do the menial tasks that really are just man hours that someone has to do. If you're looking for a YouTube caption or you're looking for a description for your business or your new service, those are things that you can just buy back those extra half hours, those extra hours that it takes to do this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. You're going to be able to free up so much time in your day to do so much more stuff, to do more of the high leverage activities. So, boom. Well, that's time is time is the ultimate currency. Time is money. Let's go into this week's business idea, Tyler. I'm going to throw it over to you. Wait. So, I feel like this might already exist. I know Slack has something similar or maybe Messenger, but it's basically voice memos. And not just any voice memos, like a group chat, because I've sent you stuff and I've sent Riley stuff and it's voice memos. And I feel like it's really good information and just having it so it's searchable because we'll often have a a conversation and then it will be like really good information. It's like, shit, where is it? And then you either got to scroll for three hours and then you got to make sure you got to find it or... What you could do is just have like a little app or a platform with like group chat, say like me, you, Riley, some other three other business people. And then you could just say, here's your voice memo. Then you could title it so it's searchable. And then you can quickly find it and go in the chat. I don't know if it already exists. Slack already does something like this. Messenger is kind of already like this. But I just think the searchable aspect of it and just making it just about voice memos to quickly go back to. I, that kind of gets my brain thinking, what if you could select, if me and you have a really good conversation about next week's podcast and there's texts in it, mm-hmm. there's photos, there's reference images, there's even maybe some voice memos where you're talking about things. If you could click the top text message that started the conversation, then the bottom one that ended it, and then almost put it into a folder inside of your messages that said, and you could label whatever that conversation was about. So then if you open that folder, you can go back. Okay, I can go read our conversation on this, that, the other thing. Because a lot of times when Mm -hmm. I go through my messages, I want to search for maybe we're talking about chat GPT, but I can't remember exactly what we were saying. So I have to like try to think of keywords. 
But if I could just take that 25 minute conversation we had, label it, throw it into a folder in case I need it, that would maybe be a cool feature uh-huh. too. It's kind of getting into like a Google Drive situation, but we don't like Google Drive because it's been shit in the bed recently on us. So like where it's just a whole bunch of different tabs and folders and shit yeah. like that, where it's like, here's a text text category with all of our messages. So I don't know, like I, th- I think it, it would be a pretty interesting idea to just be able to searchable and just find quickly find voice memos or text messages that you have. Yeah, it might even be a good addition. So Apple, if you're listening, I know I have a shoot with you next <laughs> week, but I could talk to you about it then. But <laughs> Apple, if you're listening, maybe it's a cool feature you could add where, you know, when if I click on your messages, it's like photos or you can click whatever. You just add it as another section under there that says con- saved conversations. And then those are your conversations. You just click whatever it is and it brings you to it. So maybe it's not a whole platform, but maybe it's just a feature add on to whether it's iMessage or you know just iMessage because if you have an Android then you're not even, you're not even allowed to listen to this podcast anymore. <laughs> I feel like if they just added a search function to it because there's so many times when we're just like talking and then I'm like I want to go back to this part of the message and then it's like I got to scroll like weeks before I can get to it. So yeah. it would be cool if there was just like a search function. I agree. I like that business idea. It's not as good as my uh, niche smells from last week, but <laughs> it'll get done. <laughs> uh, Tyler, anything? I do like the I do like the idea. Anything you want to add uh, before we wrap this episode up? Uh, not really. Do you have anything you want to add? Nope. You got your quote ready? Yep. Dope. All right. That's episode 26 of The Midnight Entrepreneur. If you have any questions you'd like us to cover or answer, you can email us at themidnightentrepreneur at gmail.com. If you found value in this content or found this entertaining, share this with a friend or post it on your story. If you really enjoyed the show, we'd love a rating and a review on wherever you're listening. Talk to you guys next week for another episode of The Midnight Entrepreneur. It is hard to fail, but is worse never to have tried to succeed. Theodore Roosevelt.